Hi, I'm Tail of Wygon Mates, and today I'll do something stupid and have some exercise. Oh, right, I'm also building a round dining table. So according to Google, a dining table is a table on which meals are served in a dining room. I'm making this dining table for at our home, but it might be used for drinking, riding or playing games which also according to Google, was its original purpose before it got used for dining. I'm using Belgian white oak for the top and I start with cutting the boards into smaller boards so they would fit my 8 inch planer. Hmm, inch. I'm starting to sound American. Normally my dust extractor turns on automatically, but I disconnected it before and apparently I forgot to plug it back in. Yeah, I ate some dust. I bought these oak boards a few months ago at a local wood supplier and they've been there since 2017. The guy who owns the place told me these boards have been stuck for many years in his warehouse behind another even bigger pile of boards and he never had the tendency to look what's behind it. These boards have had the time to air dry for 5 years, which makes them ideal for a tabletop. But even if they've been drying for so long, there's still a chance of tension inside the boards. Milling them could bring up tension and make them warp just a little bit. Especially since I'm milling almost a third of the current thickness. So the next step is crucial for keeping your tabletop dead flat. You're going to lay out all the boards you just cut and milled and make sure you place them on a flat surface. Next, you're going to shut down your machines, turn off the lights and get the hell out of there. The end. Um, whoa, whoa, stop. I mean, not the end, but more something like a break. Yep, that's right. Just enjoy a nice cup of coffee. Or take a nap. Re-energize. Or read a good book. Then just repeat the same process for the next 6 days, 23 hours and 55 minutes until the time is passed and you can continue making this thing. The idea behind this break is when you start with a white board like I did, there could be some tension inside the board from kiln drying the wood. Leaving the boards out for a week and letting them acclimate with the humidity in your shop will eliminate any lost tension, making them a little more stable. You still need to take into account expansion and contraction. I think I've done enough milling for now and I'm going to make a cardboard circle the size of the table to make things easier. I just tape some sheets together, mark the center, bam, draw the circle, cut it, more tape, and this will come in handy to lay out the boards next to each other. I try to make a nice mix between rift sawn and plain sawn boards and lay them in the right direction for stability. When I get to a combination I like, I look at it from many different angles to make sure the grain is looking good from every possible angle. I make sure the boards cover the cardboard circle and I mark them to lock their position. Next I'm making the edges square and I'm using the in-out method for this which I've learned from Chris at 4Eyes. He's got some great tips and tricks videos, one of them explaining this method and I'll put a link to this video in the description below. Basically, you're planing the edges in a way to ensure there's no gap when gluing them together. Like this. I'm adding some biscuits to make sure the top remains level, but I need to be cautious not to place any biscuits where the chamfer will be routed. 
I marking to where the chamfer kits and lay out all the biscuits to finish with some four eyes film magic. It's time to glue the boards together and I did the gluing in three times. The main reason why I did this is filming. I've never made a table by myself and combining a delicate glue up like this while filming isn't easy. I do think using parallel clamps would make it easier but I'm still looking for a sponsor. Another way to support the channel is just subscribe. Thanks. When all the boards were glued together, I wanted to feel the weight of it and I noticed there's some weakness in the direction perpendicular to the boards. Luckily this will be fixed later on when adding C-channels to the bottom. I cut out the circle with a jigsaw, staying a little proud of the line. Then I professionally slammed the scraps into pieces with a hammer followed by the one and only time I'll ever use the floor thing to vacuum this table. Next I flip the table upside down, pointing the upside down. And I drill the small pilot hole in the center to rotate a circle jig. I'm using a shelf pin to rotate that instead of a screw or a nail because I think it feels more stable when routing. My circle jig is just a piece of plywood with a hole in it and I just add weight to the center to prevent the pin to pop out. I don't own a bit that's long enough with a shank of 8mm or 3 eighths of an inch, so I finish with a flash trim bit. So at the bottom there will be this chamfer, leaving almost nothing left of the straight edge on the side. I want the top edge to have a round over, but if I do the chamfer first, there's nothing for the bearing to touch, so I made sure to do the round over first. The next step is both the most exciting part as well as the most terrifying part for me. I'm going to make this big chamfer at the bottom, but I've never done anything like this. There are so many things that could go wrong, like taking away too much and ending up with a sharp edge and no more roundover, or tipping over the rounder jig you see me using here. Will there be any chip out, which I need to repair, or just how long will this process take? But as time went by, as I carefully routed, I learned and modified the jig with some extra support until I felt confident to speed up the process. I'm really happy with the result. It feels smooth and gives the table a professional look and I think I can call this a success. Now let's get to the next step and make some slots for the C-channels. I marked where they'll be, used a small bit and wrote it along a straight edge. With a hand plane and a chisel, I made a small chamfer for the inner rounding of the seat channel. Then I marked mounting slots to drill some holes for threaded inserts, but I made a mistake. 
or rather I had overlooked something. I was planning on using this M6 insert with these M6 bolts, but well, I think you get it right, they don't fit. I had the choice to make the slots bigger or make the bolts smaller, but since I hate metalwork, the choice was made quickly. I ordered smaller bolts and inserts and made a dowel to glue in the three holes I drilled before I started to actually think. I did use the bigger ones to attach the legs, which you see me doing here. Countersinking the holes just a little will make sure the threaded inserts sit flush with the surface. When the glue on the dowels is dry, I use this jig to trim them flush. Then I redrilled the holes to fit a smaller threaded insert, which made this table ready for its final stage, finishing. When I was making this table, I caught myself slowing down, because I had a lot of joy making this table and I didn't want it to be finished. I'm only 29, but it's been years since I've made furniture, and I must say, I think it suits me. It gives me the opportunity to be creative at my own pace, which is rather slow. And it allows me to express myself with this warm material called wood. In addition, this project was quite a challenge. I know this is a simple table, but I strive for perfection. When I get guests over, I like to amaze them, because I care of what people think. I care about their opinion, which will always remain their opinion. If I'm getting a little deep here, it's because I believe a round table sparks deeper conversations, and I like that. And I hope you like this video and you might subscribe to the channel. Maybe this video created a little spark for you to make a round table yourself. If so, enjoy it. Thank you for watching this video and I guess we'll meet again at the next one. Bye.